Hello everyone and welcome to Lanier's 2021 Stacey Barnett Poetry Slam. I'm Isabel Chan, your MC for today. Before we get started on the poems, I'd like to sprinkle in a little history on this event. Our annual Poetry Slam commemorates Stacey Barnett, a UT graduate and former Lanier student. Stacey was known as a wonderfully kind person and really fell in love with poetry during her time at Lanier. Unfortunately, she passed away in 2009. In the following years, our Poetry Slam has been named in her honor, and today we're keeping that tradition. Our first poem of the day is called Rise Up by Misha Wijay Sekera. Enjoy! Rise Up by Misha Wijay Sekera. My mom wanted to buy a very expensive couch. After one glance at the price, my dad went, ouch. But to be precise, it wasn't from the price. Who am I? I'm a Buddhist. I'm told not to be excessively materialistic. In a gist, going down a checklist, it's not this. Wanting a couch isn't materialistic. Looking at the statistics and logistics, it's simplistic. The price is irrelevant when you think of the memories while sitting on this fancy accessory. Who am I? I'm a human. It's in my blood to make mistakes even when I feel the world is at stake. As humans, we all plan to want, to hope, to desire to aspire and inspire by doing more than is required, even with a flat tire. To keep running with a busted shoe, even when the finish line isn't in view. To never eschew. To want to climb higher on a never-ending mountain with a straight back and high chin. Not everything goes according to plan. We all make mistakes, but they jolt us awake to what we did wrong and make us strong. Although it's easier said than done, we must rise up and get it done. Thank you. Next up, we have a set of poems about growing up by Julia Bai, Pranali Rasharajan, and Shreya Thakakar. As a child, I'm sure that everyone can agree that everything seemed bright. The world around us filled to the brim with shiny and interesting things every day. Our imagination knew no bounds. A simple walk to the park was a whole adventure, jumping over deep ravines carved by time, wading through fast-moving currents threatening to sweep us away if we weren't careful. As time passed, though, these little adventures turned into just that. Little. The ravines we jumped across faded to become a mere crack in the sidewalk, the river suddenly no more than a puddle. The world dimmed and I didn't go to the park anymore. In fact, I didn't go anywhere. I started thinking less about my escapades and more of other things like if I looked good or if maybe, just maybe, today was the day that people started to like me. Time continued. Every day, a repetition of the past, wondering, will I finally be good enough? These thoughts spiraled until nothing else mattered anymore. All that mattered was my appearance and how people looked at me. Gone was the little girl who was so carefree. Until finally, I came to the halting conclusion that maybe I'll never be good enough for all the people in the scrutinizing world. The wall falls. The glass shatters. Wow. The world really is dim. Then, like someone pulled back the curtain, the sun shines through. A bright contrast from the rest of the bleak world, a beacon in the dark. I rise from the glass shards. I don't need to be good enough for everyone else. I'm good enough for myself, the people that care about me, and that's enough. As I came to this realization, the world suddenly turned bright again, as if someone splashed a bucket of paint on it. Maybe I should go to the park again. Hi, I'm Pranala Sri Rajarajan, and I'm going to be performing my poem, Those Days. I remember those days, and the light used to shine so bright, the piano keys lit up all white. I smiled wide at the sight of how the piano sat just right. I remember those days when I lived without any worry, enjoying delicious curry, eating a McFlurry, running in a hurry to pet everything furry. I remember those days when the mirror was to see my reflection and to look at any small imperfections, not about applying overcorrection to attain perfection. Now it's all about the complexion. I remember those days when the bed was for taking a rest, not for taking a test or being the best or seeing who's depressed or who will be oppressed next. I remember those days when the law used to protect, but now they're far from perfect. All they do is take each suspect and neglect, leading to misdirect. 
I remember those days when I wasn't scared to leave to retrieve the toys that were given to me with no fear of being deceived or dreaming how much I could achieve. I want those days to become two days, the sun shining all day, eating food that was okay, going to real school in May, running outside to go play, laws that don't drive us away, and dreaming to go to Bombay. When will those days become two days? And will I ever experience those days again? Thank you. Hi everyone, this is Growing Up by Charity Caker. Growing up can be hard. You go from jumping and laughing around in your backyard to staying in your room crying, and sometimes you feel like not trying. Why were we all pushing to grow up so fast when we could have just lived in the moment having a blast? We want so badly to be done with school, but what are we gonna do? Work from nine to five, cause that's so cool? Being a kid was so much more fun. I can't believe my childhood is done. Although I'm still a teen, I'm not a kid nor an adult. I'm right in between. Everyone asks what I want to do for a living, but honestly, are you kidding? I'm 14 years old and I don't really have a plan other than to go to medical school when I can. There's so many ways to live life, but how do I pick one that won't put me in a strife? There's so many questions I want to ask, but for now, I'll focus on the present, not the future, not the past. Yes, growing up is hard, but I will make memories that ever last. Up next, we have an incredibly powerful poem by Lolita Chowdhury. Hi, my name is Lolita Chowdhury, and this is my poem, Nothing But Hate. As children, we form friendships with other kids at the playground, with other kids at lunch, other kids at soccer practice, kids at the school bus. Yet, as we transform into adults, people change. I don't like her, she's dark. I don't like him, he's gay. I don't like anyone, they're all different. Long gone are friendships and naivety and innocence replaced with hate. To say that to hate is human or that love conquers all doesn't address the main issue, rather stalling and ignoring it. We define hate as deep dislike, dislike defined as heated hostility. We can go forever in circles but the truth of hate lies hidden in those circles. We've seen the cost of hate, wrecking a country, a color, a cause, and many different characters. Hate is bloodily written all over our history books. The Cambodian genocide, the Holocaust, the Armenian genocide. We keep turning these filled history book pages to find more. The Bengali genocide, the Great Purge, the Rwandan genocide, Millions of people forever lost in our history books. Just another number, another statistic, another dead pawn in the end game. So many lost lives, some were husbands and wives, others were only children. Let me repeat that, only children. Children like you and me, children young and bold, looking towards a brighter future, children with dreams and hopes and ambitions, Children, just children, gone to hate, to never live another glorious and beautiful day. Children who never got to graduate and make their own living. Children who never got married and had kids of their own. And yet our past seems to seep its way into the present. Uyghur Muslims subject to internment camps. The Rohingya Muslim genocide, brutal Asian American hate. In the Middle East, conflict in Israel and Palestine. People believe that stepping over a few dead bodies is nothing compared to coming out victorious. All these tragedies could have never been predicted. That's because we aren't born to hate, rather we're taught to hate. Starting from the days we play in the playground to the days we grow up and form our own opinions. And while we might be in too deep in the cycles and the pyramids of hate, the time is always right to do what is right, to start loving one another as our own. Love is respecting, caring, and sharing. And while we say hate is a strong word, love is an even stronger word. Having the ability to change the person we once were to the person we shall be. And so we must now ask ourselves, how can we prevail over our predecessors and succeed for our successors before the hate consumes us all and we are left with nothing, nothing but hate. Up next is My Ghost by Catherine Hu.
Hi, I'm Catherine Hu with My Ghosts. Missing can be a strong word. Missing can be interpreted in a million different ways. So, what exactly are we missing? Well, it could be our phones, it could be ourselves. Worries in our head, all running like elves. There's so much to uncover with times changing like seasons, so much to understand, yet we can't find our reasons. Our reasons to continue and our reasons to grow, our reasons to hold on and our reasons to go. You once brought me hope and you kept me sane. You watched me cope as I dealt with my pain. The pain that I show whilst laying in bed, curled up in blankets with all these thoughts in my head. These thoughts create waterfalls that could put rivers to shame, creating this bonfire that's impossible to tame. Well hidden behind mountains of smiles, flooding into the sea as I sit in denial. Denial to what? Denial to me. I'm locked in and begging to be set free. Free from what? Free from the ghosts. The ones that strut and the ones who repeat. Those same few words that I'm so tired of hearing. The ones meant to hurt. Oh, they're far from endearing. Perhaps it's time that I leave them behind. They're worthless to me and they plague my mind. Yet I hear your voice almost all day long. I think it's time to believe that you're wrong. And thus it's time to give my mind a rest, to settle the day and end your jests. I look out the window with this smile on my face, speaking to you at a clear, slow pace. Good night to you, good night to me, good night to ghosts that only I can see. Thank you. Now, Mirabella Nader Mohammadi will share voices. Hi, my name is Mirabella Nader Mohammadi, and I'm gonna be doing this like poem that I made. It's called Voices, and yeah, okay. As empty as I feel inside, the voices are still there. It's like being trapped with nothing, but when you think you're alone, you start to hear things in your own head. They tell you you're not good enough, eat less, eat more, be pretty, wear makeup, and be good enough. Am I good enough? I always thought I wasn't good enough because of these voices. I would see things at night, I would hear whispers, and see things move. It felt like I was there, but everyone was ignoring me besides the voices in my head. I've only listened to the voices in my head that was telling me that I'm not good enough. Thank you for that lovely poem. Next up, Duthi will share her poem, Here. When you say, you're a lot more chill than other women, I hear those words. I hear them in ways you wouldn't imagine. I hear them as I am not fighting, not fighting hard enough. Not fighting hard enough for the woman constantly putting up with society's perils, constantly worrying about not being fragile enough for the people around them, worrying about being seen as something they never intended on becoming. I hear them as though I'm not extending my voice, extending it wide enough to stretch across the world and watch the world rumble in reply, not far enough to tell that young girl, who just saw her life flash before her eyes, that she will be fine, and that she is perfect, just the way she is, and that she doesn't have to be afraid. I hear them as me being a coward, a passerby just standing there helplessly, watching millions of women bleed tears through their eyes, experiencing the pain that you are incapable of understanding, incapable of experiencing in your life unless you were born as she was. I've seen the darkest moments of history, and where men had it dark, women had it darker. I hear the words you mumbled out, a lot more chill. I hear them as though... I am what society expects me to be, fragile and perfect, standing away from those radicalists, far away, in a dark corner where my voice doesn't matter, where my opinion is covered in makeup that I didn't choose to wear with free will, but I was forced to use, and create the perfect little smile on my face, as if I were society's plaything. 
The blood streaming down my face unseen, the power I have as an individual vanished into thin air solely because I haven't proven myself as a fighter because I became what society wanted me to be, a perfect little ragdoll. Now, listen up for poems about nature by Anna and Sophia. During the day, the sky is a plain and serviceable blue. The sun beats down belligerently, and cotton ball clouds gather, growing grayer and heavier, until they burst and rain races through the leaves to the forest floor. The tall trees, the ones that have wrestled their way to the top of the canopy, gaze down, feeling the warmth of the sun in their foliage. They luxuriate, sipping water, and watching with amusement as the little plants strive vainly for a patch of sunlight. At any complaint from the less fortunate vegetation, the tall trees sneer, survival of the fittest, and stretch out for some more sun, say condescendingly, you better watch out, it's a jungle out there. And the little trees sigh because, yes, it's a jungle out there, but they didn't have to be so rude about it. In the evening, the sun drops. An invisible cloth swipes across the sky with cleaning solution that is pink and red and gold. The clouds, banished for the night, have trundled off to unload their cargo on a different landscape. The light slowly fades. First, the soft edges of dusky lavender. Then, the bold scarlet strokes. Then, the salmon pink puffs until the last aureate glow melts away. A hush settles over the forest. The tall trees relax into their roots. Peace and quiet, they murmur and direct their gaze upward. Spread above them is an expanse of midnight blue elegantly freckled with stars. Stars that are glistening and effortlessly glamorous. Stars that the tall trees watch jealously, thinking, what we wouldn't give to look like that. Stars that fill the tall trees with envy, but also something else. Awe, wonder, reverence. The tall trees are the greatest beings in their little kingdom, but the stars make them think that perhaps, perhaps, perhaps there's something. But soon, they shake themselves out of that silliness. After all, they think, probably the stars are admiring us from afar too. Daytime is a time for fierce competition, a time to push and shove and vie for resources. But nighttime is different. At night, even the shortest shrub can peer out through the canopy and see glittering pinpricks in the majestic dark velvet of the night sky. The little trees crane their necks to gaze up at the constellations, unreachable, unknowable, but comforting. Not like the sun, which carelessly tosses a ray their way now and then, knowing full well how desperate they are for light. The stars exude a sense that they're above it all, but they're not snooty. Perhaps, the little trees think, the tall trees could take a leaf from their book. And they stay that way, stargazing, picking out glowing hunters and lions and bears in the night sky. They watch until the first burnished glow appears on the horizon and the sun gets ready to start the day.
Next is an incredibly moving poem about Asian hate by Clarissa Lee. Hi, I'm Clarissa Lee and I'm going to be reading my poem, Black Hair. I like to keep my hair down because everyone says it looks better that way. I, I think so too. I let my waves wash up on the bay of my neck and back and chest. My sister has long, beautiful hair, swirling tides which undulate in ripples, which cascade in an arc of a rainbow and airs out in a ponytail over her neck and back and chest. Sometimes I put my hair up. A slow and tiny stream of liquid drips down, disrupts, slips off the sunny sand of my cheek and into the sea of my neck and back and chest. Six women had beautiful hair with locks like the deep sea, plates like whirlpools, clips adorning their hair like moon jellies, proud sisters, daughters, friends, mothers, and their swaths of ocean cheers, their rivers of streamlined black, and they got shot, and I hope he feels the turbulence of tears, devastated parents, children, and brothers down his neck and back and chest. My brothers and sisters, straight black hair, cropped up, curled, tied, dyed, or just kept down, accentuated by their bright brown eyes. Pools of festivity, feast, felicity, splashing into blood, scratches, bruises all over their necks and backs and chests. My cousin's modest black hair, tucked in cloth or let out free, soaring in the wind over marble and prayer beads, thunder rolling and belting and howling, but it's not the booming thunder sounding. There's homes crashing and children crying because bombs fall all over their necks and backs and chests. My friends, curling black hair, instruments of twirls and braids, stylish and shiny beads laid in the harmonies of their souls and songs. But it's hard to sing for long, they're afraid, because bullets are dug in their necks and backs and chests. Our Black hair lay in ribbons of waves and shades of nights pulled up in tides and our oceans glow like stars while breathing like rivers, yellow and Nile with their sapphire, lapis and teal. They twist and bend, our lakes mend and heal these wounds on our necks and backs and chests. This is Rishi Kundor's life poem. Enjoy! Poem for life. Life is a game where you win or lose. Life is an ocean where you could not find your destiny. Life is a riddle where your answer makes everyone shocked. Life is a moving vehicle where you decide the speed of your destination. Life could be compared with everything you see. Here's a great poem about anxiety by Mayan Sonenschein. Stop! Just get over it! It's all in your head! The words I've heard over and over repeated in my head like a broken record. It's what they tell you with anxiety, the single-handed power that notoriously turns the smallest nag into a full-scale event. Because all it takes is one little tick-off to start a burning blaze that erupts like a wildfire in a forest consuming your brain, closing your throat, tightening your chest until you can't breathe. But you can breathe, you're not dying. Yes, you are! The thoughts keep swelling, maddeningly, multiplying, maliciously manipulating you. And then it's over. They say it's all in my head, every time what I dread. A cut on something metal is tetanus, nervousness is a heart attack, a cough is a deadly disease. <clears throat> what if it's cancer? A new food is an automatic allergic reaction, a headache is a brain tumor, and so on and so on and so on. They say it's all in my head, but the price is as heavy and deadly as lead. 
It truly is the doubting disease and what a disease it is. A parasite that never rests and to that I can attest. Yet some help does come. I see light. I see it. It's just in my head. Then it comes back. Roaring, ruining, rampaging, rebellious, revengeful, relentless, reckless, and reoccurring. I cannot let the fear win because it's in my head. But when the attack flares, how do I know if it's in my head? How do I know if this nightmare is in the bed? Because what if it's in real life? What if? What if something is real? I swear that's how it feels. What if? But I will keep trying, keep trying, trying to control this doubting disease. And one day I promise you, I will beat what is just in my head. But until then, all I can do is wait, wait until my anxiety is dead and it's out of my head. Next up, take a listen to The Last Time by Emma Xiao. Hello, my name is Emma Xiao and today I will be reading a poem I wrote called The Last Time. Summer was coming to an end. We were heading back to the States, leaving my grandmother behind. Mama left the room, giving me and Lalo a moment. One last goodbye. I looked at the old woman standing before me, clothes hanging off of her like a coat rack, head bald and proud, skin speckled with age and drooping, suffering from the symptoms of the old. And I was about to say goodbye. How do you say goodbye, farewell, I'll miss you, this is the last time we will ever see each other, and I want you to know that I love you, without it clogging up your throat. The words suddenly seemed so childish and plastic in that moment that I didn't know what to do. So I hugged her. She welcomed me, whispered my name in her accented English, and started sobbing. Hearing her cry struck a chord in my heart. All my life I've known her to be as strong and steady as an ox, not like this, shaking and frail. I started to weep. I wept because I wish I could say something, anything, to let her know how I really feel. I wept because I wish her stupid tumor to go away for a miracle to happen. I wept because I wish she had more time on this earth and I had more time to spend with her, every last second until it was time for her to go. And I remember. I remember her rough hand in mine as we strolled through the marketplace, anchoring me to her as we navigated through the bustling streets of Beijing. I remember marveling at the softness of her skin, warm as the sun, and you could tell that every wrinkle told a story. I remember her smell of old fabric and the sharp scent of the medicine she would use to relieve her back pain. I remember sitting in a plastic blue chair, waiting as nurses rushed past, wearing calming uniforms and the scent of the sick and dying. I remember Mama, walking out the door, eyes red, nose sniffing, so broken, telling me that Lala only had the rest of the year to live at best. I remember the numbness spreading like vines curling their sneaky claws over my arms, legs, body, the denial stretching in and the emptiness hollowing out, how every breath felt like a mountain to climb and the world became a ghost. Because how do you cope with that kind of knowledge, knowing that every second is a ticking bomb and you have already lost so much time? It was our last day, our last time, our last moment, and in our last day, I squeezed her as tight as I could, as tight as her old bones could muster, and, it, and for the last time, I breathe in her grandmotherly smell, and in our last moment, I savor her presence, her warm soul near mine. And that was enough, because there is no greater regret than losing a loved one without saying goodbye for the last time. Next up, we have a group of poems about society and unfair expectations set upon us. In this group, we have poems written by Sarah Tilney, Giovanna Wingfield, Kamala, and Ellery McDaniel. Modern Survival Poem Modern surviving, defensively task, hiss when thou attack or encroaches, defend your position of existence, no human made for service of Mayfellow, except for their own, backwards bending to wait on evil man, to take the dooming fate of a messiah's throne, the body allows accommodation of only one, don't be the ever loyal son to a father tone, human evolved from an animal state, qualities of our natural form still of trait. Peace is temporary, to lull the weary, to strive for unattainable clarity. 
perfect dream. When life bursts the stupor, up comes the python's steam. Longevity comes with the price of infancy's purity. What be the purpose of guardianship besides stalling for a weakened population? The guardians and parents most noble to protect the vulnerable carnation. The pups raised to fend for and defend from the callous acts of life. Selfishness often, often leads to ugliest of strife. To the kindness of humanity, the ones to wage with ascetic the childlike graciousness, who dilutes the potency of the greedy and aggressive inhumanity. Much kudos and thanksgiving. Karma pays generously and soon you will be scooping its abundance. And so will your offenders in redundance. With a stark reminder, adopt the writhing of others. Placation is damnation. You must regret to smother. Don't agree in path of the agendas of ill-intended people. A lamb at slaughter must know better than to follow towards the steeple. Survival in a world so shallow not even a worm would drown. Keep your losses personal. Don't let them weigh you down. For the moment of opportunity strike, hit back with a knife and continue to hike the upwards ladder, each step deeply embedded in a gratefulness for every savage predator who took their stab. They reminded you to wear your armor and the autumn turning of every scab worn in a badge to fill a sash of every mismatch overcome. Society operates on uneven soil, which has come to spoil many a person. Don't let good deeds be undone. Stand up for yourself and soon yourself will stand alone. Modern survival on your own. Thank you. Why must we conform to society? Why must we welcome it quietly? It surrounds you almost instantly and it damages you consistently. Life becomes meaningless, though some may not realize it. They tell you you are worthless. They tell you you are hopeless. They fill your head with lies and they love to hear your cries. It is a world of despair filled with lands of disguise. But the best people are wise, for they have left this path for another, a path where the light overtakes the darkness, a path where all that is visible is brightness, a path where you don't see distress, but rather success. So follow this path where you can follow your heart and all the negativity will depart. But what is most valuable is being yourself, and that is infallible. I wake up in the morning and somebody else chooses what I do. The world gets to pick which shoes, what to eat, what to drink, when to sleep, what to do on my phone, what to do when I get home, what jobs are honorable and which ones are not what colors are uncool, that I'm dumb if I don't do well in school. They say I don't know what I'm doing, but I think I do. Why do you assume I can't hold my own in this world we roam? Why can't you just leave me alone? And if we're all the same, we will go insane, and this world becomes as mundane as the air that we breathe out. The shadows and complex folds of expectations speak us out of existence. We need a revelation. This begs a question, how did our ancestors progress? What did they do differently? And I digress, there's not a simple answer. But when you read the way they touched the grass, the smooth way they connected the sciences and the maths, when you see the way they learned from the past, people found their own paths. They walked their roads and rocked this world. They let themselves go in ways that we can no longer fathom. And what about the jesters? The jesters didn't care what people thought. The jesters wore their hair like they wanted. The jesters gave themselves flair and let themselves free. And people didn't stare at the jesters. Some jesters walked a lonely road. Some jesters had huge crowds. The jesters didn't do what they were told because nobody told them anything. Nobody told them that they looked funny. Nobody told them they were just in it for the money. Nobody said they'd change their minds. Nobody told them to look a different way. And so when we ask why the jesters didn't stay, it's because we threw the jesters away. And so I ask the world, who said you get to choose? 
Who said you can comment on my social media? Who said you can decide whether I look nice today? Who said you can expect things from the whole world because that's what you think is right? Who said I'm evil because I eat meat? Who said pink is for girls and blue is for boys? Who said women should cook? Who said men can't cry? Who said being a lawyer is better than entertaining a population? Who ever said you could interfere with somebody else's existence? Who said somebody can't chase the fragments of dreams we have left based on the gender or their color of their skin or the things that they like or the nature of their love or the grades that they get or the jobs that they want or the way that they show emotion or the clothes that they wear or the numbers in their bank account or their physical abilities or anything at all? Who are you to decide our lives? Who would you be to judge our ancestors? Who would you be to tell the jesters that they don't deserve themselves? So really, who are we if we are not ourselves? Who are we if we are not who we want to be? We can't just choose the ideal parts of our lives off of store shelves, and you can't choose for us. We will take the whole pie and we will enjoy it, and you will take yours, and you will not share it. And we will live our own lives and walk our own roads, and we will not judge, and we will have hope. Hello, I'm Giovanna Wingfield, and this is my poem, Poor Misplaced Child. Poor misplaced child, detached from the world, an outcast, outlier. No one sees, not even yourself. You don't see, what are you thing? So weird, nothing makes sense. Why am I like this every way pulled till I tear apart? I want to be normal. It must be dreary, though, to be normal, but I still want it. Normal, such a weird thing it is. It makes you know that it's dreary. It makes you know you won't be living with it, but you still want it. it. Makes you think if you have it, you will finally live. But if you have it, you won't be living at all. That is what normal is. Living death. But I want it. Poor misplaced child, born in the wrong place, wrong time, wrong world, wrong mind. This child is born from wrong with no right. They can't escape the chains. Tying them down, wearing them thin, they can't go on anymore. Lost in the nothing, there is no way out. The nothing is forever. They are stuck. Thank you. Bye. Is When Day Comes by Iman Aveadu. When Day Comes by Iman Aveadu. When day comes, I'll go out and play. When day comes, I won't go away. When day comes, the sun will shine. When day comes, happiness will be mine. When day comes, when the flowers are tall and strong. When day comes, when the people are walking with their dogs. When day comes, I'll go out and play. When day comes, I won't go away. When day comes, it's never promised. When day comes, it's today. Here's a nice poem by B.J. Spillman. I'm out. I lack the time. The space is filled. The bell is chimed. And no one's thrilled that the fault is mine. The tool's the same, no matter the game. But it still catches me every time. I'm out. I lack ideas. I need inspiration and motivation. But neither come easy. And I'm getting impatient. I want it now. I want fast. My creative fuel needs out of gas, so I wait. I'm departing. I lack the ability to halt. I'm going places, and I'll never stop. I'll take my friends way past the top. I'm filled by desire, a will stronger than a black hole. It burns the purest fire, hard enough to cleanse the soul. If you met me, then you know. I always reap what I sow, whether it's moldy or has a glistening glow. I'm in, and I lack things no longer. I think the winds have changed, and with them, I've grown stronger. All it took was determination, and about 20 minutes to ponder what words should I bestow upon this poem I have fathered. I shall take my leave shortly, 
But first, I'd like to say, if you're also going places, then go out and seize the day. You focus on what you lack and forget what you were made. Now your passion is back, and yet on your bed you lay. You think you're out of time, and you seek something too hard to find. Sometimes that lack of something is all it takes to open your mind. I mean, lot. Last but certainly not least is Troy Lehman's poem, Morning to Dancing. Hello, I'm Troy Lehman, and this is my submission for the 12th Annual Stacy Barnett Poetry Slam. Uh, this poem is called Morning to Dancing. There is time for pain, there is time for struggles, there is time for rain, there is time for bubbles. For every night there is a morning, for every day we gotta keep learning, though not every storm will have a warning. Your life will be on cloud nine when you cannot be startled by your own mind. Don't let the inner me be the enemy that ends me from expectancy. Live intrepidly with embassy to be your own identity. Zestfully get rid of the density. Be allowed melody mentally and live out your legacy. It's hard to be certain in life and just live in the moment. We got to be happy smile and show bestowment it's our world know that we own it be honest and give all atonement show your true colors and show your endowment show acceptance and peace and live to be open find your passion find your component of enjoyment because you are not broken you are carefully chosen Woo! great job troy I'd like to give a big thank you to everyone who submitted an entry to this poetry slam. You guys are amazing writers and true risk takers. I'd also like to thank Dr. Rene Saldana for being today's judge. He's an impressive author and professor who teaches and researches relevant literature to help our communities. <laughs> I'd like to thank the viewers, everyone that's watching this Poetry Slam. I hope you enjoyed it as much as I did. Thank you.